The things that I'm going to tell you about today are horrendous, but the flip side of it is some of the things that, that the New World Order and the Illuminati know, if they were put to good use, would be fantastic. But if you, if you saw what I've seen, it would make you angry that these people are taking what could be used for the elevation of mankind and they're using it to enslave us. Evil men have already divided up the world into regions and they've got it all planned. They want to rule the world. Their goal is to reduce the population to a half billion with a few of them as the, right, you know, the, the elite get to rule the world. God has plans for the world and so does Satan. And Satan's plan is no people here, maybe just a few, and a one world government. The Bible says perilous times shall come. The people will be fierce, despisers of those that are good. Christians are going to be absolutely hated. strategy for America in this period when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity. It isn't just a crisis. We know the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Do you not think an angel rides in the whirlwind and directs this storm? But I do have one question. During the crisis or any time that you're aware of, uh, has the Federal Reserve or Treasury participated in any gold swaps arrangements? Uh, we don't, the Federal Reserve does not own any gold at all. We have not owned gold since 1934. Don't burn me once again! <laughs> now with these plays, which hither ye have fought from regions where I reign. Which passages of scripture should guide our public policy? Should we go with uh, Leviticus, which uh, suggests slavery is okay, and that eating uh, shellfish is an abomination? Or we could go uh, with uh, Deuteronomy, which suggests stoning your child if he strays from the faith? Or should we just stick to the Sermon on the Mount, a passage that is so radical that it's doubtful that our own Defense Department would survive its application. told me, for what it's worth, that some of us will be able to have ascended abilities, I mean full-on ascended abilities, prior to the actual shift happening. So that would be very cool, because what we're expecting after 2012 is a 100 times more harmonious utopian world, where things like time travel, levitation, instant telepathy, instant healing, telekinesis are as common and as everyday as breathing. What is at stake is more in one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind. Peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. I want to tell you about a few of the things that I have learned during 
these last five years of intensive research. Perhaps the most startling thing that I can share with you is that all of the conspiracy theories that you've ever heard about one world government, about the UN takeover of the world, all of those conspiracies have now been laid to rest. There's nothing conspiratorial about it. It's all published. <laughs> the UN-funded Commission on Global Governance began meeting in 1992 in earnest and met for four years and last fall released their final report. It is entitled, Our Global Neighborhood. If the Bible is simply a book of myths, fairy tales, and stories, then it is disturbingly accurate in describing what we see unfolding in our current world climate. In my personal journey, I've come to the conclusion that the biblical worldview best explains the origin of evil and its many symptoms to mankind. It explains human suffering and the inescapable reality of death and decay that we experience in this world. But most importantly, it reveals why mankind has used deception as its most powerful and reliable instrument to carry out the plan set in motion by an ancient hate. Alex Jones, in his film Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement, summarizes the sacred mission of the global elite as, quote, to have a two-class system where the underclass are forced to live as slaves in tiny enclosed cities, while the elite enjoy the land of the earth, evolve into superhumans with the aid of implantable technologies, live eternal lives, and travel the cosmos. This is the promise given to the inner members of the New World Order and the agenda of the Bilderberger Group, end quote. This sacred mission of the world elite has been the primary motivation for the establishments of several layers upon layers of systems in this world. The following sectors are the major components of infiltration in this plan. They include the political, 